Hi again everyone, I'm Chris Tisdale and I'm a mathematician at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. And in this presentation, I'm going to give a basic introduction to Hilda's inequality. So what I'm going to do is present a basic case in RN and I'm going to state the result and discuss a proof. Now Hilda's inequality has a lot of applications in mathematics. Those applications will appear in other videos. And in particular, one of the main motivations for putting together this particular presentation uh, was using Hilda's results in my own recent research. And I'll release those, uh, those new discoveries on YouTube in due course. Now, you don't need uh, to know a lot of mathematics to follow along with this uh, presentation. I'm pretty confident that a final year high school student who's seen vectors before would be able to follow much of this presentation. So let's get started. So let boldface A and boldface B be vectors in Rn. Here I've written them in their component forms using rows rather than columns just to save a little bit, bit of space. Now whenever you see boldface letters throughout this presentation, I mean vectors in Rn. Now the following result is credited to mathematician Otto Hölder. Um, strictly speaking, another mathematician should be mentioned also, Rogers, who proved the result a year, a slightly different version of the result a year before Hölder. But throughout this presentation, when I speak of Hölder's inequality, I'm going to mean inequality too. And uh, I'm just going to stay with convention and, and call it Hölder's inequality. Okay, so the centerpiece of this presentation is the following result. Let P and Q be numbers both strictly greater than 1, and in particular let P and Q satisfy this equation here. Then for all vectors A and B in Rn, their components satisfy this inequality 2. Now, inequality 2 is rather confronting when you see it, it looks rather abstract. So I just wanted to um, give a, uh, I guess a simple case. So let's discuss the case when n equals two. So we're working in the, in the plane, r squared. And let's let p equal two, so q has to equal two as well. Now, n, p and q don't have to all equal each other. I'm just choosing a, a simple case. So. What does this look like in, in, in the following case? If n equals 2 and p and q are both equal to 2, then 2 becomes the following. So our, for our vectors a and b, we'll just have sort of two components. Well, the left-hand side is just the following. So this is less than or equal to the following, oh, B, B1 squared plus B2 squared. Okay, now, um, if P and Q are both equal to 2 and N's just arbitrary, then we can sort of link um, Hölder's inequality with another inequality called the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So uh, just, just staying in this simple setting, this inequality here then implies the, f the following. Well, this is going to be greater than or equal to the following just by simple triangle inequality. And so just using this this is going to be less than this right hand side. Okay, so on the left hand side what we've got really is the absolute value of a dot product of the vectors a and b. So this here is just 
on the left hand side this dot product with the absolute value and the right hand side is just the length, the product of the lengths of the vectors A and B. So we get the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Okay, essentially it says that if I take two vectors and take their dot products and values, then that's less than or equal to the product of the two vectors' lengths or magnitudes. Okay, so that's a special case up here when n equals 2, uh, p and q are both equal to 2. Okay, so lemma 1 is going to be the main focus of this presentation. Okay, so that's the statement of the result. Let's talk about the proof. Now the proof is in two stages. First of all, I claim that Hilda's inequality is a homogeneous or homogeneous expression in the following sense. What, what do I mean by homogeneous? Well, if two holds, Hilda's inequality holds for two vectors, A and B, then two holds for all multiples of those vectors, A and B. Okay, so let alpha be uh, alpha and beta be uh, scalars, re real numbers. If this is true for all vectors a and b, then it's true for all vectors alpha a and beta b. Now it's not quite clear why we what what this has to do with proving the, the result, but it will be, become clear in a minute. Okay, so let's just show that expression two is homogeneous. Okay, so let's just assume two holds for all vectors in Rn, A and B. And what we're going to do is essentially show that this holds for all vectors alpha A and beta B. Okay, so let's, instead of having a i and b i on this left hand side, let's replace it with alpha a i and beta b i. Okay, so we start with that. Now you can see that essentially I can pull out the absolute value of the alpha and beta, pull it out of the sum. Because we've assumed that this is less than or equal to this, I can form an inequality and get the following. Now what I can do is just redistribute the alpha and the betas back into each bracket, if you like. Okay, so that's exactly what I've done here. So what you can see now is this follows just with alpha AI instead of AI and beta BI instead of BI on both sides. So what we've shown now is that Hilda's inequality really is homogeneous or homogeneous. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, what we're going to do now is show that Hilda's inequality satisfies for all those pairs of vectors, A and B and Rn, satisfying this condition. Now, again, this looks quite abstract on a first viewing. So what I'm going to do is show you just a simple case um, in the plane and show you what the significance of the homogeneity and this condition um, really represents. Okay, so So let's say n equals 2 and p equals 2 in, in here. And if p equals 2 by 1, q's got to equal 2. Now, in this case, we'll get a1 squared plus a2 squared equals 1, and b1 squared plus b2 squared equals 1. Now, that is just 
the points lying on the unit circle. Okay, so essentially this condition represents, for, for this case, represents all the points lying on this unit circle in the plane. So what I'm going to do is show that, uh, in this basic setting, is show that Hilda's inequality is satisfied for all points on this unit circle, and they'll have position vectors, of course. And if I can do that, how does that imply then that the result's true, say, in the, in the whole plane? Well, let's say I want to, uh, let, let's say I've proved this setting, and I want to prove that Holder's inequality holds throughout the whole plane. And say I want to show that it, it, it holds for these, this pair of vectors. Well, if I can prove it in this setting, then I know that Holder's inequality is satisfied for these, these two orange vectors. And because of the homogeneity, to get the red vector up here, I can just multiply through by this orange vector, just by some multiple, and the same down here. And by the homogeneity of Holder's inequality, Holder's inequalities must be satisfied for these two red vectors. So that's the idea. Okay, We show that, at least in this basic setting, that Holder's inequality is satisfied for all points on this unit circle. Because of the homogeneity, I can then scale these vectors to get every other vector in the plane. And we know by the homogeneity, Holder's inequality must hold for those other vectors as well. So that's the basic idea. Okay. All right, well, in this setting, Holder's inequality reduces to the following. Well, these sums are just one. So in this bracket, I'll get a one. In this bracket, I'll get a one. So the right-hand side is just essentially one. So that's what we're going to turn our attention to. This far simpler inequality here. And we're going to try to prove this simpler inequality. Okay, well, how do we do that? Well, just a little bit of calculus, really. Suppose I've got the following uh, function, and equivalently I can just rearrange and um, use the relationship between P and Q in one to get the following um, uh, two expressions for the same curve. So if I just say draw in the xy plane the following curve, y equals x to the p minus 1. If I just rearrange that, it's just x equals y to the q minus 1. What I'm going to do is define two regions that, are, um, that lie between the curve and the coordinate axes. And essentially, I've um, um, defined the regions through these curves here and, and the, the region that they bound, in a sense. So. Let's have some number A and some number B and form some horizontal and vertical lines. Now I'm going to define the region R1 and R2 in the following way. This is going to be my R1, so the region under the curve and above the x-axis between 0 and a. And this is going to be my region here, R2. So above the curve, below the this um, horizontal line, and to the right of this vertical axis. OK, well, how does this help us form this inequality? Well, hopefully you can see that, at least in the picture that I've drawn, if you look at the area of R1 and the area of R2, then that's always bigger than or equal to the area 
of this rectangle here. Okay. Now, if these, if these, th this horizontal curve and this vertical curve sort of all lined up at a point here, then you would have equality. But um, in general, the area of this rectangle is going to be less than or equal to the area of R1 plus the area of R2. Now, the area of the rectangle is easy. It's just A times B. That's less than or equal to the area of R1 plus the area of R2. Now, how do we find the areas of the region R1 and R2? Well, we can do that using simple integration. Okay, so just by integrating from 0 to A this function here and from 0 to B this function here with respect to Y in the second case, I can come up with the area of R1 and the area of R2. Okay, and like I said before, if you just compare the areas of the rectangle with the area of R1 plus R2, then we get the following inequality. AB is less than or equal to this plus this. Now, this is a special inequality called Young's inequality. So what we can do now is, in 5, replace A with absolute A sub I and replace B with absolute B sub I then we obtain the following for say i equals 1 to n and what I can do is then just sum up both sides from i equals 1 to n and keep the same inequality. Okay, so we have the following. Now, going back to our condition 3 and expanding this bracket, these sums have got to sum up to 1. So I end up with this is less than or equal to 1 on p plus 1 on q and from our assumption 1, 1 on p plus 1 on q equals 1. So, lo and behold, we have formed inequality for the inequality that we were chasing. Okay, so we've shown four holds for all points or vectors, if you like, that satisfy this. The homogeneity of Holder's inequality then implies that two holds for all vectors in Rn, A and B. Okay, so that's a proof of Holder's inequality. Like I said before, it was broken down to two parts showing that, firstly showing that the, the expression really is homogeneous and then proving the result um, for all points or vectors that satisfy this condition. Okay, so here are some references, and like I said at the beginning of this uh, video, I'll be showing some applications of Hölder's inequality in due course, and in particular, I'll be showing it in um, some of my research presentations. So I hope you can join me for those.